this is Boxing Tickets and I in association with SB Sports and Chaco. We're here at Pete Taylor's Gym and, I, and I, we wouldn't come to Pete Taylor's Gym, we're done with Public Nuisance. No, Sean McComb. Public Nuisance in the house. In the house. How's things? All good, all good. Uh, taking over Ricky here now. Um, done enough damage over Christmas now. It's time to kick up a hole and go back at it. So I'm, I'm glad to be back and feeling burning. Fantastic, and I guess you know it's you know I was, I was sort of saying you know you were sort of helping with directions and I got to go down to Peach Gym. It's a straight road, pretty much straight down the road. Down, it's straight road, one forty, one hour, an hour forty minutes gets you down here. Like, it's not too bad. Straight road, like you say, and that's all free. Definitely, and that's what you want. You know, if you have a straight road ahead and you there's no turn offs or no yeah. nothing to distract your sort of mind. You know, other than a few few garages that sort of make me selling a burger or two in the way down the road. Is that going to be? Same doesn't happen to me, it doesn't apply to me. I guess on the way back home today, you'll probably be looking to go, I'd love a burger, you know? Burger King or uh, one of my Chinese new boxes, but sure, this is good during the week. And I always eat it on the weekends, just for a dinner, a decent enough dinner, but keep myself ready during the weekend. Uh, keeps me right. It definitely is. Um, we probably say, probably about around this time last year, we were probably in final preparations for the Gavin Gwynn fight. Yeah. I think we'd sort of said, and then build build up to your last sort of fight, a lot can sort of change. Are you probably now, probably it wouldn't be fair to say obviously things didn't go, and I know you haven't said yourself that things haven't went well in other camps, but it's probably the change is what you needed. They sort of, you know, becoming a dad and everything else is a change to Pete Taylor's gym, probably putting you in a different surrounding breaking different comfort zones, so we're probably now going to see a better version of what you were previously to your gunfight. Yeah, 100%. I mean, just Pete's just got the best like, the best qualities back out of me um, that I always had, and I neglected for a while the feints and the feet work. Um, I just wasn't doing them at the same level. Pete was able to identify that quickly and just uh, fix it, tweak it, and and Jazz literally just says her to me after that spar, I had um, about five months ago saying you're boxing better now than you ever have, aren't you? So, I mean that's not for me to say, it's for other people to say and if, if people at the level of Jazz are able to see it then I'm happy enough for my progress here with Pete. And I guess probably, you know, it's probably of no, no alarm to yourself but I guess, you know, you were very hard to match early, early on, obviously before the Gavin Gwynn yeah. fight, you know, Jamie obviously said that where they was giving you tests and going, let's see what level you're at. You know, the Gavin Gwynn fight wasn't you. You know, on the night, you know, there was no, it was sort of, it was like, I'm just here in whatever way, it's sort of, it's going to be a dog fight, and here comes out in top ones. You know, you weren't, like, whenever we seen you in the field, I remember saying the afterwards, that's good to see you back at what you were. You know, you were, you were in the night, you know, it was like bang, bang, gravy, chip all over, you know. Um, but, but, like, probably looking at the Ronnie Clark fight, you know, I probably said afterwards, you know, straight after the fight, and I remember speaking to Tyrone, sitting in the ring, and I was going, I'm disappointed in Ronnie. Uh -huh. But then when I looked at it, I wasn't disappointed in Ronnie because you didn't give him a chance. Yeah. Ronnie says that himself. He, he just said, I see him put a, a, a post up on Instagram or on the social media platforms just saying that I just didn't let him settle. And any time he tried to get going, I was just hitting him or moving and just taking that away from him. And I knew that he was a tricky operator. And, you know what, the battle went into that fight, the way, with the same mindset and the same frame of mind that I went in with Gavin Gwynn, Ronnie Clark would have beat me as well. Because that was a street trade movie, and, and Ronnie Clark would have beat me, it's a fact. But as I say, Pete was able to identify what I was doing wrong, and Brad, he just going to be out flat foot, it, um, stale at boxing, which doesn't suit me, trying to rely on just upper body flexibility, and Pete was able to go, what are you doing? You're sick, you're the most best thing you have. Your feet walking your distance is unbelievable, and let's get it back. And slowly but surely now you're seeing it coming back. So um, in fact it's, it's better now than ever was. I'm using it and I make that part of my game plan. when you look at the, the Ronnie Clark one, obviously when you look at Ronnie Clark's resume can, compared to Gavin Gwynn's and, and I know probably you'd have no problem taking a Gavin Gwynn rematch tomorrow. Yeah. I think Gavin probably thinks it differently. Yeah. But would you probably put the pedigree of Ronnie Clark and obviously Hughes fought and everything else? Would you put him as a higher level in Gwynn so you know that oh, they're, you've they're, learned from your defeat? Oh, 100%. They're, they're right there. They're, if you look at the category, like the quality of fighters that go forth and, and high close to Fran, they were they were points, and yeah, they're, they're definitely on level terms in, in terms of uh, quality. And I think that, again, I'll be mad tomorrow. I wouldn't fizz me, I know. And the fake work alone would just be the winner in that fight. And, and obviously you, you've announced since that you're sort of moving up to 140, yeah. you know, you started your career at 140 and sort of 
trial the sort of thing coming back down. What's the sort is the sort of process behind it that you probably would seen the best of you at one forty rather than sort of one three five? What what's yeah, the just do you know what? The one three five is sort of I take a lot of make like I take a lot of attributes away from myself. I focus a lot on weight loss and mentally I'm not having that really. I drill and it's just that extra five pounds. So I'm trying to come in the fake week of five pounds later than I usually do and it's just it's a fucking headache from start to finish and it's it's I mean it's, it's a big cut for me and I can make it healthy like when I do the, the game body scans or the DAXA scans it is telling me I'm, I'm healthy and I can't do it but the way I'm feeling it's not healthy you know what I mean it may be healthy physically but not mentally for me it's not. so for me it's it's now about moving up to 140 where I believe some of my best performances came from and um, um, it's about odd now with a new coach, Pete Taylor, and, and making myself a better fighter one for it. And, and, and I guess probably in some ways probably the Gavin Gwynn probably fight came to sort of give you something to learn on, you know, sometimes you say it happens for reasons. You've obviously, has any thought process sort of changed obviously becoming a father, you know, how are you finding the sort of, I know when you come down here and you're, you're away from the sort of distractions, but becoming a dad now does it give you a bit of focus and determination and sort of sometimes trying to get the most out of boxing, you know, because you want to be able to provide for your family and everything moving forward, you're a business owner as well, do you sort of look at it and go, well, you know what, there's better fights being made, there's probably more money to be made at 140, yeah. probably rather than slogging yourself at 135? Yeah, 100%. Uh I value myself more now, a lot more. Before I like Daniel Kelly, any any fight was ever made, I never asked for a penny. I didn't ask what money I was getting, or I just showed up and fought, not pay. Whatever it was that I was accepted. I didn't care. It was the best days. I was like, I'm just here to, to progress in my career. Or now it's different. The first thing I'll do is ask what am I getting, and if, uh, I like if, if I feel I'm, I'm being undervalued, I'll say it because I know my worth, I know myself worth, I know I'm right up there in the pinnacle of the sport in terms of ability. We've got a great following um, and I know that my skill is right up there with the best and people pay to watch that so I value myself now and I want to be in there on great fights. As I said to Jamie, I want to fight like that. Jamie says me after the last fight against that early car, best performance, I've seen best performance because he's very good, he's tricky and he doesn't allow you to be good but I was able to still be good and uh, and I think that even at a higher level again against a good boxer, someone with a good boxing brain, someone who's tricky, someone who tries to, to draw you in, someone who's trying to outsmart you, I think you'll see another level to me again because I haven't fought someone like that before. I've just fought home four fighters, tough nuts, tricky tough nuts, people who have been there, that experience. Um, so I'd like to step up again now and just face someone who is, that people would see on the same level as me, if not better. I think sort of we sort of put it a couple of weeks ago, probably, uh, you know, I sort of look at it and I probably say the probably only thing you're missing or, you know, with you is a belt, yeah. you know, I'm probably looking at that and probably looking at, you know, probably a Celtic or Irish title fight, you probably look at the likes of Ray Millet, yeah. uh, Victor Rabbi, is these the sort of fights that you now want because, you know, I guess probably what boxing shown us recently is you don't know what's given, you know, you obviously look at Cash Work obviously having to retire there. Um, there's obviously been other ones that probably haven't come into the public eye as yet, but do you sort of look at it and you go, well, my time could be limited in the sport, so it would probably, you don't want to look back and go, you know, what well, was a pro boxer, but what have I really got to show for it if no belts to sit in the monopiece? I know, like, yeah, I think I've, I've like six belts in the house for my amateurs, like elite belts, elite Irish titles, I mean, fuck all, they're just sitting together, just something. Like, I want to achieve what I, like, for the books, I want to see what I can achieve. It's, work, it's what they tell your kids, it's not, look now I have, look, I've got a belt, look at this, mm -hmm. no one cares. The belt's not really worth money, is it? You think it looks good, it, does, it looks good, but how long you want to carry it with you for a couple of weeks? And what goes into your fucking, what goes into your storage area? With the slides and gathers dust, like I said, six belts of work, ten, they melt, melt everything to me. Mm -hmm. But the fact that I can always say that I've won these belts in elite championships, I've won a European medal in elite championships, they're all there. And I haven't looked at them from them. So they're there, I can tell people that that's all matters. All they need to do is take my name in and Google and okay. So the belts, the actual belts will mean like Jack Ship. It's just the fact that I am a champion of some sort um, means more. And to be able to say that means more. To be able to tell my kids that when they goes up means more. Um, and like you say, if whatever, whatever uh, belts out there are available, I can take it. And if it's a big jump, give me it. Like, honestly, don't care if it's 
county tables or a European table or whatever it may be. And I think I'm more than popular table. The public uses phones on 24 7. I, I guess it's probably good to, you know, for, for probably anybody that doesn't really probably know you, probably know that by, by what you're speaking and everything else, it's, it's clear to see you hanging about with Troy McKenna quite a lot because he's. He just wore mug 24 7 and I guess to get the most money out of boxing nowadays you have to take the fights whenever they're offered. Oh, 100%. Like, I, I, as I said before, I, at the time I wasn't even fighting formally because I was, just, I was taking these big step ups and fights and getting to big pocket I wouldn't do it again. Like, as I say, I've got a son, I've got a business, I've got, I've got a home now. I think there's loads of stuff happening that you need to, like, I need to prepare for. So I wouldn't do it again to myself. Um, but again, that, that comes with uh, having the family and, and going on and boxing and getting down that level of, um, yes, I suffered a, a defeat, so what? It doesn't mean I'm not on that level anymore. I know I'm more than capable of uh, pursuing that and, and going. Uh, and, and that's exactly what I'm doing now. It so, was a short few years there for me, like I'd say, three years max. I want to be like, at um, least I could teach three years. What would you sort of say to any up and coming boxers that sort of, you know, I get to that stage where it's sort of not knowing the worth, I guess. It depends on who you're with. You know, obviously we, with some uh, some obviously organisations in boxing, it's just ticket deals only. You know, obviously when the time's right for somebody, they're going to get them opportunities where they're probably going to know the worth. What would you say to them? Obviously just ask a question, of, is this the best offer I have, rather than just accepting it? Just seek advice from other people here, on the, here in the sport. What would you do if I got this? Don't be afraid to ask because there's a lot of people out there, there's a lot of takers out there like, to get your, your hand off. Um, so just ask the face. So other people who've been in that situation before, like luckily I haven't been in a ticketing situation, I can make empty guys over into me and, and I haven't been in that situation so I can give advice but I'm sure there's other fighters, plenty of fighters in the, in the Holy Island that are capable of giving you advice on what they've been through and what they ask for and no, don't do this and don't do that. So, there's, 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 there's still a lot of good guys in the game that, are, that, that I know will be going to help. There's plenty of them here, like Big Butch, Mark, they've all been through themselves. And I'm sure they would be going to help you as well, and they really could. Fantastic, and when should we obviously expect to see you back in action, I guess? You know, you're here, you've hit your knuckles in the gym, as they say, in the boxing game, you've hit your knuckles. Gary's always had a big fight with Vasquez announced, Tyrone's had a fight announced. Tommy and yourself are sort of here, putting in the hard work and waiting in fight news. Jamie had sort of mentioned maybe April in Belfast. I oh, well, there's talk of April. Like, Jamie told me he us March, so I've been here and I was in Manchester last week sparring Jack Carroll and performing right at that level. And, um, and I, he said April, but again, I, honestly, I don't care. I, like, I think they say the year, I know I'm probably going to come off a good win and fight again in that field. And then again by the end of the year, so it doesn't matter when at the same of the year, as long as I fight. And if April is the date, then April is the date. And, I guess you know for for years so we probably are still looking at five weeks out from mixed fight with Lee Wood. Yeah. Is it probably been ruled out yet? That it obviously fighting on that card or? Well, that's ruled out fully. Like, but I mean, if an opportunity came, if, if an injury came, or someone going forty was fighting and an injury came, or, and I was there, I'm just saying take it. And again, that's one of the other reasons why I moved to going forty because. I'm willing to take an opportunity at three, four weeks notice and make the weight and go in and still perform. As I say, I'm here putting a, a trend in. I've put hundreds of rounds of sparring in the last two weeks. It's over Jack Cat, over Manchester, going around different teams, sparring different people. Sparring Gary Coley here, sparring their own, sparring Josh Dickens here. And, and done a couple of rounds over Kane Race as well. So I'm just, the rounds are early, I'm, I'm fit, I'm good to go. Um, as Pete says, and it's crazy how fit you can get so quick. But I always take over. People don't see it. I says to Pete, "Mad, it's crazy." A couple of weeks ago, I was not the holly, and now I'm, I'm, I'm down ten rounds with Jazz and Gary. Two weeks later, no problem. Me. And he's funny. He was laughing. <laughs> But I guess everybody was an alcoholic a few weeks ago, obviously about Christmas and everything else, and then you just right and then to get back on the horse. How you was obviously, you know, having Jazz in the camp, obviously he's fought for world title twice, obviously sparring with Jack Carroll as well. Does it sort of, I guess, being with MTK, sort of showing you the opportunities you can have, you know, getting in there with world class fighters and probably showing what's still left to come from yourself? Well, 100%. But like, the lads here spar with no ring, really. I'm, I'm very good, I'm very, I'm very capable of competing at that level. And say Jack Carroll had me over last week, he taxed and asked me to come over again this week. Um, but unfortunately this wasn't, wasn't a good idea on my side because as I say, myself, for if again, I just thought, fuck, I'm going to lose the training, I'm going to spar him. 
I need to stay here and focus on myself. And, uh, and that's exactly what we've done here. And we've got extra rounds here instead by just staying. So um, I'm good enough to compete at that level. I've been, it's when I'm having jazz in the 10 minutes, it's, it's, it's fresh, it's fresh result. And again, the show around them, sparring, it's, it's another, it's another thing you need to work on yourself, you know, just different tricky, different stage, different ring, you just have to work on it and keep yourself focused. Having, having certain people in the gym sometimes can sort of push their game on. They obviously, people, are, you know, there's so many motivational quotes and stuff out there. Success breeds success. Uh, sort of having people like like Jazz are there, and, and probably even sorry, Colleen, in a way, because potentially we're obviously looked at fighting each other in the past. Yeah. They've sort of been in the gym now and sort of seeing what he's like. They sort of go, Craig, I'm actually glad that we're in the same gym now. Obviously, rather than becoming opponents, because obviously. He fought Joe Fitzpatrick and yeah. people were sort of on the fence in each way they go and I guess the last few years Gary's shown the level he's at and improving. Do you see obviously how much Gary's talked about now in terms of obviously where he can go and you're going, I'm glad I didn't fight you? I know it isn't, it was just it was talk from media and it was not really any talk from your Gary or MTK or his friends. Potentially down the name was there at the top level. But any Gary do Patty around Swan. Um he's a phenomenal athlete. He trains all the way around, he, he's on the ball, he knows where he wants to go in life and, and his attitude towards training is unbelievable. But as I say, we're, we're gym mates now, we're mates. We went to Manchester last week, I'm here to support him, I'm going to go over to Mitchwick and support Gary and Mick. Again, a fellow Irishman, fellow teammates and, and they're people I want to see succeed. And even when I was late with, I want the guy to succeed as much as I did. So at the end, we could potentially make that fit. It's a win for me, one. Win for him, win for me, win for Irish boxing. And, and that's the way I was looking at it. I was never, I was never looking at Gary as if I didn't want him to do well. Why not? He's a, he's a, he's a fellow company man. And I, I wish everyone well. I guess that's probably one of your but the strongest traits. It's sort of something that people don't forget that, you know, even though people class you as a public nuisance and sort of like a clown, sort of at times the way you go on. You always want everybody to achieve, you know, I know sort of some of the VTs from from uh, your last fight and things like that, obviously about boxing and having no politics and things, and yeah. it's sort of got great publicity that sometimes people forget about in the sport, and you know, sometimes you go around different gyms, people say certain things about different boxers, but you just seem to want the best for everybody, and, and that's what life's all about. That's, that's, that's exactly it. Like Pete texts me and says, look, there's no conflict of interest between him and Gary. There's Americans, there's four Americans at Iglia who are all world champions. Or, in around that, you've Garcia, you've Davinini, you've Tiafim Lopez, you could, why can we not have two Irish Iglia champions? Why can we not have a Super Iglia thing? Why can we not be in the same gym? That's good. And then and that, that, that won me over. And I said, well, that's good because Pete's obviously on the same level of thing as me. Both Gary Coyne and Lopez, both Sagan and Lopez, both Tony Hamilton and Lopez. Like we're all on the same weight, but what's the difference? Do you know what I mean? And, and that's exactly the attitude I like to bring in the gym and, and the, the attitude I want to be surrounded by. People who want, want other people to achieve as well. As I say, we're all on the same journey. Yes, well, Sean, listen, thanks very much for your time. Obviously, we hope you have a great weekend back home. Um, we'll obviously look forward to hearing you getting some fight news. Bye, bye, Gary. Cheers.